as you all know, the economy's been broken, and it's been broken for some time. Uh, it's not just that we're headed into rising unemployment. It's the fact that economic growth, whatever there's been over the last seven years, has not reached typical working families. How to re-energize a moribund manufacturing sector? That was the question at an Economic Policy Institute forum in Washington. Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown, in the keynote address, criticized venture capitalists who buy U.S. plants and then move those jobs overseas, such as with the American Standard plant in Tiffin, Ohio. We've seen again and again how Bain, and I don't mean to single them out except that was the subject of that, that roundtable, but how Bain and other investors have come in, cut pensions, cut health care. Um, they create jobs all right, but it's just jobs in the wrong countries. And that's their business model. Downsizing is met with short-term gains for the venture capitalists. This is one of the key business models that's, that's de-industrializing de this country. We're at a fork in the road in what we do with manufacturing, what we do about the middle class, what we do about economic growth, what we do about national security. Every single day we spend without working to renew American manufacturing, in some sense means two days by our children and grandchildren paying that debt for our inaction. For George Sturzinger, executive director of the Renewable Energy Policy Project, the fork we take could mean a revitalized U.S. industrial sector. The great advantage of the renewable energy, the final products, and the supply chain is that the cycle of technology innovation is enormously rapid. Um, that, I think, it should be one of the bases for the U.S. developing the renewable uh, domestic industry and competing in the world. And think about the 1920 automobile image. I mean, who's going to make those changes uh, will really determine who has a competitive position in that market. Senator Brown agreed that climate change and need for energy independence will drive congressional action in the next few years. Congress will address climate change and with that the creation of a market for clean energy and green jobs. From wind to solar to biofuels to clean coal te technology to fuel cells, we have the capacity to become a leader in clean alternative energy manufacturing. Manufacturers and workers will need an assist um, transitioning to this new economy. Innovative policies are needed to move forward, obviously, in a much faster pace, and we're not doing nearly enough with the federal government and what we should be doing. Susan Helper, an economics professor at Case Western University, says we should pave the high road to improve manufacturing performance. So this illustrates, I think, a lot of the situation of U.S. manufacturing. Uh, there's some problems, low-wage competition, but we also have opportunities, uh, as Sherrod said. We have a lot of skilled workers. We have increasing demand for sustainable products. We can bring these things together in a high road production recipe. Uh, and by that, I mean workers and suppliers and management, we're going to work together to make innovative products, sort of win, win, win. Uh, and public policy can help. Foreign participants in the audience had plenty of questions and suggestions for moving the United States towards progressive industrial policy. Are, is there any thoughts to s simply saying, hey, the most socially environmentally responsible companies are certified as green paying zero and the opposite paying the 34 instruction RC corporation tax? That there's a number of things we have to do in this country around having a competitive manufacturing base, and it ranges from how we actually do trade policy to encourage our businesses to stay here and to not take advantage of cheap labor and bad working conditions in other countries. In our Pumping up U.S. manufacturing stokes the economy and injects new life into the American dream, Senator Brown says. And manufacturing continues to be, as we all know, the engine of U.S. economic growth. I understand the words of Pope John Paul II. He said, we judge any economic system by what it does for and to ordinary people and by how it permits all to participate in it. The economy should serve the people, not the other way around.